Hey everyone, it's Jackov, and I'm here today with another battle replay for Total War The Dawn of Stays. Today's battle replay is an assault on uh, Khazad-dûm, otherwise known as Moria, by an army of Erebor, specifically a gold tier army. And what I mean by a gold tier army is an army that is like peak. It's like the best units available with a mix, like it's mostly professional units with a bit more tougher units mixed into it. Uh, and this force will be going against a very heavily armoured and elite force of goblins defending their holdings. Uh, I'm personally leading the uh, goblins, no, I'm personally leading the uh, dwarves, I should say, in this battle, while the goblins are being played by the PC. Uh, I kind of made this battle replay to give you guys an idea of what a really late, late, late tier army could look like, as well as to show you what enemies you could be expected to face, and also to show off this map. Because, I'm going to be honest, I love this map. Anyway, we're going to put the battle into slow motion and check out both armies. And as we do, let's actually look at this map. It's the Mirror Mirror. The, uh, the special gate right outside of um, of Moria. You know, the speak, friend, and enter gate. Carved out of Mithril. I wonder if this is the gate that we actually see in uh, the Rings of Power, like, yet to be developed. Looking... Actually, we're going to put the battle into normal speed. Looking at the... Erebor Force, we've got the Arid Mithrin Veterans, a gold tier shock infantry unit. We've got Erebor Axe Warriors, which are their bread and butter for professional forces. The Erebor Crossbowmen, um, that's over here. The Dwarven Baruch Guard, another elite gold tier shock infantry unit. We've got the Matok Warriors, a slightly less elite unit. We've got Erebor Halberdiers, a bit of a uh, medium unit. Then we've got the Mansion of Acclaimers, which is our general unit, a very heavy axe infantry unit, which is one of my favourite looking units in the game. Then more spear guard and axe warriors, and more crossbowmen. And as we can see, they are just attacking the, uh, the gate. I won't imagine if the Fellowship did this in the movie, you know, they just pounded their way through the, uh, the gate into Mordor. Moria. I always get Moria and Mordor mixed up for some damn reason. And there they go. It's down and they're charging and waiting to greet them. Uh, goblin. Wow, there's corpses of dwarves here from centuries. Goblin spear warriors and battle was joined. Then blade warriors. Blade warriors. And then more forces at the back. So they're trying to defend this first point. And yeah, I mean, catching us off guard here before we can deploy ourselves is kind of a good idea. However, um, our elite units are going to kind of make an intimate of these guys. Now, you might wonder why I deploy the elite units first and foremost, and the reason for that is actually pretty damn straightforward. It's I wanted to be able to push a hole in their lines long enough for more and more of my units to come through. As you can see, wow, well, we'll see. One thing to note is that this map does feel cheap a bit due to it having the roof and everything and the walls that interact with the uh, environment. Oh, just look at him, this gold armor there. It looks amazing. Um, as you can see, you've got the first chamber, then you come through that, you enter the larger chamber, then the map extends over this way to more catacomb areas, and then back here you've got the uh, the reserve of the goblin force. You've got the mortal Uruks, you've got mountain trolls. I think there's the mountain trolls or cave trolls. You've got more goblin warriors over here, more here. You just got a massive goblin force. So we're gonna jump back to the battlefield and look at just how black the battle is. And already you can see they're carving the path. Some dwarves have fallen and yet they're they're pushing through. Looking at the balance of power, the dwarves number just under 1600 and the goblins over 2800 and they've already lost 300 warriors to 20 for the dwarves. And you can probably guess it's going to be a grind fest. If I was the goblins I would have brought up their archers and begun to rain down on us. We're very exposed and our damaged forces can't really enter the city as it is due to the uh, traffic jam still the charge further and further. I love the uh, horse air press. Really running this on these 
Lucas using the god of the uh, ancient breaks. I think that's the of the Elden Mithrin medals, I should say. Wolves are fighting with Fury, it's to be expected. They are trying to retake their homeland. Golden Ranch and Reclaimers was a two wolves. One of them. Yeah, one of them being deployed. It's charging in. And that's one issue with this big push is that my forces are out of formation. Which also means the enemy infantry is out of formation, which is great for my shock infantry who can carve into them. But it means my halberdiers and my spearmen and the units that rely on being in formation to win are uh, at a bit of a disadvantage. No, he doesn't. Hammers him to death. I love that dragon first. How will this war go? Now the gold tier goblins have deployed. They are. Uh, this is important. The high chieftain's guard. It's not their general unit, but it is a pretty elite unit. And their archers have joined the fight too. Very reckless move. I could have wasted the force by putting it here. I would have tried to move around the flank here so they could get enfilading fire into my flanks. are making good progress, but as they push forward, more and more goblins are deployed. Still, there are a lot of dwarves waiting to come. And again, this is the perfect opportunity to have one archer here, one archer here, and this will rain death on the dwarves from the dwarves in multiple different perspectives. But the computer decided not to do it, and I'm the person that's going to complain about it. I really wish that if one day a story or a depiction was made of how the dwarves are leading to the following of finally the goblins after the destruction of the battle, but this is. This kind of even approaches our walls in or that it approaches our walls in my mind. Yeah, as I was saying, in my head cannon, this is the, the uh, for this battle. This is the final push by the uh, walls of Erebor uh, to finally reclaim one of their ones and four. Yeah, not having to worry anymore about the uh, barrel to destroy their arms. Kind of the ultimate revenge for battle. And they are through. The gates are captured, the units are broken, and the dwarves have suffered relatively minor casualties, yeah, incredibly minor casualties. Just 50 or so. Uh, as they're getting ready to deploy, more problems are pulling back. The archers are finally going to be shooting, which is much appreciated. However, now Yet another unit is getting ready to deploy, and there we have it, the mountain trolls. So the blade warriors storm down, these warriors storm forward, and this is awesome. There they go, smashed right into by the cave trolls. No, mountain trolls, mountain trolls. Already some elite warriors have been killed just in that charge alone. And these guys are going to be a real threat. There go the warriors. The archers are picking off the dwarves. And also, yeah, sorry for the uh, camera angles. It's locked in because it's on this elevated area where the uh, stairs go up. It's going to be really weird to watch. 
back the archers are trying to open fire on the, uh, on the trolls, which, you know, again, we want to pinpoint and break down the enemies most of the as quickly as possible. Like before, the High Chieftain's Guard got slaughtered in battle because they were heavy swordsmen going toe to toe with elite shock infantry. Here, though, these guys who are designed to punch holes through infantry, uh, you've got to turn to something other than infantry to kill them. I realise trolls are terrifying as it is for regular humans and elves. Not for dwarves and hobbits, they must be so much more skilled if they're that much larger. There we have it. Many of the orcs and dwarf lives here. More of them trying to push up the stairs to do more damage. And to their credit, they're, they're somewhat making progress. Units keep pulling back, coming forward, pulling back, coming forward. Archer volleys keep coming. Smart, we do that. And the wolves are literally fighting an uphill battle, or upstep battle. Good God, they're always the welter of blood over here. These trolls alone are kind of evening out the battle. It's killing vast swag and dwarves, the most important warriors. Ooh, nasty. He just punched him in the face, he gets gutted. And he in turn also gets gutted. Put him to the ground. Stabbed him to death with a halberd. Doing quite well. Tell you what, while I appreciate the goblins sallying out to engage us near the, uh, the door, this defensive position here would have made so much more sense for them to stick to. Side. Let's have a look at the archers. Just a vast horde here, just waiting, and then behind them, more and more and more and more. Truly, the world extends out over here. Mordor is packed to the brim. Now, here's the thing: if you think this battle is cool as it is, imagine this but on a bigger scale, with multiple, multiple, multiple players fighting it as a multi-part series. That's something I'm kind of interested in making, is battles where it tells a story of a kind, and each battle has an impact on how the next battle goes. So say, for example, these dwarves lose most of their units, but they capture Moria. A resurgent goblin force attacks, but because the dwarves suffered heavy casualties, the army they fill the next time is far smaller. Something like that. If you guys want to help make a series like that, let me know. My email is down in the description, as uh, is my uh, details on Discord. You can hit me up on that as well. And if you're part of the Discord server for this mod, uh, you'll be able to really easily contact me. There's the white floats here, just absolutely scattered corpses over there. The cream of the dwarf and the crop is lies dead here. I'm going to turn back to the stats and have a look, and the battles are more or less evenly balanced. The dwarves have now lost over 250 warriors compared to the goblins who have lost a thousand, more than a thousand. It's, it's balancing out, that's the best way I can say it. And for every game that they make, these mountain trolls are just holding them back. There we've got the uh, Iron Guard of Iron Hills deploying. Yeah, this one unit of uh, 
blade warriors behind these goblins, behind these mountains, doing incredibly well. And they're down two, which is a great sign. Once you see the trolls begin to drop, it means they're not that long for the world because the others can now be focused down on. I'm going to pull back and yeah, just look at this. It's an absolute coating of corpses all over the place. With the archers and the crossmen back here waiting to go. But this is it. These are all the forces that the dwarves have. They've got nothing outside the city. Either this makes it or it doesn't make it. Still they keep going, coming on the way. This brave halberdier is at the back just fighting. And there you can see the high point of their incursion. They will go that far up the uh, stairs before they were wiped out to the last man. And the goblin warriors have fallen back. Trolls are now dropping heavily. Down to three, down to two. Once these two guys go down, well, it's bad luck for the goblins up there. You are amassing, there goes another one, and the last troll leads just surrounded on all sides by the stabbing and shooting as much as possible. Down he goes, and there go the trolls. It is an amazing job of buying the time for the goblins. Archers open fire, and the clash is met. And this is going to be a bit of an issue, but I genuinely do not know how we can zoom in now to see the battle there. Wow, that's bad lag. Like, you can see it from the goblin perspective now, just this shiny horde of specks of white, gold, and silver. It's this muddish brown and red colored goblin force, but... Apart from the nice visual contrast it makes from that position, I prefer this POV of just slowly grinding their way up the fortress, or up the stairs. And the archers and the crossbow are just opening fire as much as possible. And more and more goblins storming down the stairs. And looking at the units at the front, some of them, like the Iron Guards, have taken pretty damn significant casualties. In general, you know, the National Plane is almost at half strength. The Shock Infantry, like the Madoff Warriors and the Halberd Deers, aren't doing too great. Every Mithrin Veteran is not exactly the best in the world. Tomb Wardens suffered a bit, but still going strong. You can see this is endless counter fires pushing them back. Even the archers to the rear uh, have suffered a fair bit. And in exchange, the crossbowmen, uh, the archers of the Red Mountain have suffered a fair bit. The crossbowmen, not so bad. And the best part is that these guys aren't actually too bad warriors once they uh, run out of ammunition, so they can boost the strength of this army more effectively than the goblin archers can at the very least. So yeah, the shock infantry are leading the charge, pushing that uh, troll corpse up and down the uh, stairs. The stairs have at this point been entirely painted in red here. Like, that's impressive how much gore has been spilled here. And these armies aren't exactly massive either, which is like, well, they are. But still, here we've got the devastation. Just corpse after corpse of it everywhere. All these wolves gave their life for the chance that they'd be able to reclaim their homeland. And, yeah. Something about this is eerily haunting and beautiful. Just the bodies littered everywhere after the, after the battle washes over them. Looking at it, the spear warriors in the front are on the verge of breaking, which means they've got to deploy more infantry down the hill. 
don't want to buy time. The Blade Warriors are doing their best. But, uh, again, they are significantly outmatched by what's coming here. Heavy archers are deploying straight into melee, which uh, adds a bit of a waste because now they're just losing archers who could have done so much more damage on the offensive. The spear warriors are coming forward, and behind them we've got a shock infantry unit. The elite, well, not quite elite, but more elite, order route. With massive forces charging down. I'm not going to lie, shock infantry being counter charged by shock infantry downhill, while, just look at the lighting on the camera just messing up, while this exhausted and generally fatigued and like lower numbers, that could have an impact. It's just massive, massive goblins and orcs now doing their best to hold the line. However, they are, because they're so messed up, set themselves up perfectly to be shot to death by the uh, crossbowmen and the archers. Got the Tomb Wardens going straight into it to support the Maddock Warriors. More halberdiers on the front line and more spear guards. Yeah, I'm really sorry for this, guys, by the way, that I can't zoom in any better because the map is so finicky. But, like, I love the map and what it's done. Like, absolutely amazing concept, and it really brings Moria to life. But by God is it a pain in the ass to try and like film cinematically when you just keep jumping up and down. Honestly this battle has become just more and more of a meat grinder. Like how many corpses are gonna litter the stairs by the time they're done? Already you can see it where they've broken units, but it'll get worse, especially up here. And already, you can see this is as far as they've gotten. It's brave war. Absolutely demolishing this archer. Shock infantry men who, yep, that model just took him, probably split his chest in half with that two handed sword. All shock infantry coming into the fight, both units of them, so doubling up. And the dwarf orcs are really throwing everything they've got into it. Both sides now have roughly the same amount of men, and now that's a horrible situation for the goblins to be in given their you know, strength and numbers. But for the dwarves, it's not that great either given like, a lot of the numbers that they've lost have been their best warriors or their shock infantry. And their archers and crossbowmen are out of ammo. Oh, the archers and the crossbowmen are getting drawn into the fight for the shoot. Let's see if we get back down again. I love that, just this wedge of golden dwarves stabbing and shaking their way through as best as they can at least. Some of the archer units are breaking for the uh, goblins. Again, every unit that breaks is worth that little bit more. Yeah, these shock infantry are really perfectly poised. Wow, that lag is painful. You'd think having to spend all this money on a gaming PC even a lag like this. More 
shocking. Oh, oh, that was a brutal death for that dwarf. Goblin goes down, but there are orcs are everywhere. Oh, that is amazing. This one. Bloody decapitated. And you can see some of the gob some of the dwarven units are wavering. They are Maddock warriors. They've suffered pretty brutally. And they're breaking. And you can't blame them. That said, the goblin units aren't in that much better of a position. However, they've got the reserves. In addition to the units that are still fighting, they've got yet another unit of spear warriors in the back. Also their general unit, I think, given I can't see him anywhere. Compared to the uh, dwarven general unit, who is very much down in the deep of it. The Maddox warriors are returning, and if, again, little, every little bit helps. Bit by bit they're cresting forward. Just got to punch a hole through this line here of shock infantry. And as you can see, all those golden dwarves there were slain. Two Mordens are tough, but massive mortal orcs swinging those gigantic weapons. Yeah, not really much of a chance. There goes another unit. Down there, the Arid Mithrin veterans are still fighting, I'm pretty sure. Okay, yeah, I thought they'd pulled back for a second. The Maddox Warriors are sh absolutely shattered. Uh, and given how many of the units they've lost, I can't really blame them for that. Crossbowmen are still waiting back here. More of a push. These. Ooh, what unit is that? The Mithrin veterans are on the brink of death but are still doing their best to carve a path. It'd actually be terrifying being a goblin at the back here and seeing just glimpses of the dwarf slowly becoming more and more apparent as they carve a path through the warriors up front bit by bit. And this battle is one massive grind fest. Neither side of the lantern. There's not really space or time for strategy. And wow, those mortal orcs just got obliterated by the crossbowmen. Seven Erid Mithrin veterans yet left yet they still fight. And wow, there goes the uh, Dwarven General, dead. Yet still his forces fight on. And still his general unit you know, sticks around. And this goes to show you how tough and elite these guys are. And even with their general loss and having suffered so many casualties, their units are still sticking around to duke it out. For the most part. Crossbow men slowly whittling them down. All they're going to do is keep pushing a bit further. And get through all these ranks of infantry. Now the uh, the Archers of the Red Mountain have joined the fight for the Dwarves, doing their best to, uh, not doing their best to keep up the pressure, but the best way of describing it. And yep, the corpses and the red, the red path is most all the way up here. Shock, mortal bullets keep running up and down, up and down. 
Bucks trying to cycle charge into their formations. Another unit breaks and falls back. Crossing and continue to open the fire. How the deers are shattered. The mansion reclaimers and team wardens still fighting hard, even if they're getting less and less of a number. Looking at the stats 750 dwarves to 660 orcs. Balance of power is in favour of the dwarves and Zelda numbers. However, a significant proportion of that are archers compared to the more to the Moria force, which is all like warriors, all melee infantry. And see what I mean? Slowly their lines are shrinking bit by bit. Where once they extended up to here, they're being compressed more and more. At the same time, the Mordor Uruks and the uh, Spear Warriors are taking grievous casualties. General units suffering. when they're continuing to open fire, even if they're getting friendly fire, every every bit of damage they do counts. Ooh, that was a nasty way to die, crossbow bolt to the face. They're definitely pushed forward more with the spear of them gone. The, uh, the Ooks can't defend quite as well. One thing is for certain no matter who wins this battle, Moria has more than been paid for in blood at this point. Absolute carnage here. See, bit by bit, driving them back. Out of ammunition for these five, but that one's still got ample firepower to keep going. Unit shattering, or breaking at the very least. The dwarven guard are wavering. Can't blame them at this point, they've been the spearhead of the army for so long. Guard go, they can't keep it up. With the 70 mortal orcs left fighting, their, their time's almost over, it seems. And there they go, they break as well. And a few are still sticking around, but just. 
look at the corpses here. It's everywhere. It's, these stairs are coated in corpses. It's amazing. Just wow. It's absolutely calm at this point. There they are, they're flying forward. When finally they're on open ground again. Imagine the claim as a general unit. Some of these dudes covered in gore head to toe. And what's facing them in the distance? Goblin spear warriors. And the enemy general unit is nowhere to be seen. So it begins. Some of a couple of those guys died on impact. And this is the issue, it's spear warrior versus how to do it. Even if they say spear warriors with their name. I'm not exactly like flowing infantry at this point. Possibly they're still shooting. All the carnage wolves doing their best. Even if they're getting hit in the back by crossbow bolts. And I'll be honest, this was a pretty big mess up on my part here. I should have honestly stretched my forces out a bit, sort of throwing them on and mass into this one unit. Who, due to taking up defensive formation, actually are doing pretty well against my men. Like, if I just kept a thin layer of troops in the front, sent warriors around the back, we could have won. But because of that foolish frontal charge, there goes 50 warriors. We could have made all the difference at the back here. Mansion Reclaimers, also Shadow, and they're gone, so there goes my general unit as well. To their credit, these goblins actually do better than most of the rest of their army. Incredibly empty dwarven line, tired dwarven line, depleted one, or the uh, or the problems. And just like that, I think we might have a good clue. Who's going to be winning this? The Elbow crossbow take up position behind him and start shooting into their rear. This is the way you want to do it. You want to clear their line down the entire way. Well. I mean, the friendly fire wasn't really appreciated given how many warriors they killed here, but still, every shot helps, except for the ones that hit you on the And because so many warriors have been killed over here, they're being forced to thin out their line, which means more troops can be killed more effectively. Admittedly, troops are breaking as a result of this, uh, this little strategy. The, uh, the spear or the crossbows are shadow. As long as these crossbows are shadow, though. And the unit shatters. They didn't have the fight left in them, and the real question becomes. Where is the enemy general unit? He's all the way back here hidden in the deepest, darkest pit. 
and he shatters without even seeing battle the Goblin King. And oh, we're going to talk about this. So it's a Pyrrhic victory for the forces of Erebor, and they've seemingly reconquered Moria. So congratulations to them. However, had this Goblin King unit been deployed earlier, it could have turned the tide of the battle by keeping their general unit back until the very end. Like the goblins kind of screwed themselves, because had they been deployed at a part, any part of the battle where the balance was really like ebbing, like it was a touch and go situation, they could have turned it around entirely and won. But by holding back their forces, they lost, which I think is a good lesson for you guys: is that you have to know when to deploy your troops and when not to, and holding onto your reserves forever can sometimes just lead to them being completely impotent as was the case here. Anyway, we're going to end the replay, we're going to look at the armies and see how each unit did. So, looking at my forces, uh, the dwarves lost a thousand and came out of 500 surviving, so they lost two-thirds of their army, which are horrific casualties for any army, but compared to the goblins who of their 2,800 lost 2,600 with only 170 remaining, I'll, I'll take those, I'll take the Erebor casualties any day of the week. Going through the Erebor units, the Mansion of Acclaim has got 163 kills, which isn't that great. On, like, it's good, but for a gold tier unit, you would have thought they got more. 226 for the Matok Warriors, very impressive, given they're a lesser unit. 317 for the Erid Mithrin Veterans, great, absolutely fantastic. 344 by the Baruch Guard, can't talk enough about how great that is. 214 and 312 apiece for the Axe Warriors. Fantastic, 145 and 179 by the Spear Guards, also great, 151 by the Iron Guards, no complaints there whatsoever, 77 by the Halberdiers, which, while on the surface it's a pretty poor kill count, given that these guys were the only tier 2 unit in my army, and I included them to have a bit of variety, they did better than expected given they were fighting tougher infantry. The Tomb Wardens, 211 kills, fantastic. The Archers of the Red Mountains only got 39 kills, which is pretty disappointing, and a lot of them also died in melee too, so, yeah, can't really say they did too well. These guys, Erebor Crossbows got 119, the other one 142, very respectable. So all in all, I'd say the Erebor faction ranged from mediocre to absolutely fantastic and trailblazing. In comparison, turning to the Goblin Army, uh, it's quite a different story. The Goblin King got zero kills and pretty much doomed his faction to lose. Goblin Blade Warriors, 5, 7, 36, and 42. That's just abysmal for all of them. You would have expected them to get more given they're the toughest infantry the faction can field, with the exception of the High Chieftain's Guard, who got six kills. A gold tier unit only getting six kills is a joke. I understand they're goblins and they're not tough, but even so, like, come on, they've got to do better than that. Turning to the Mordor Uruks. 101 kills and 65 kills. The hundred, like, given who they were fighting, it's not bad, but you could have hoped for it to have been more. Then these Spear Warriors got 170 kills, which is pretty damn good. And these ones got 248, which is amazing. Like, so far, these guys are MVP. The rest of the Spear Warriors got 17 and 36, which is pretty bad. And their Archers got 3, 38, and 29 kills. Pretty bad. Lastly, the other unit that they had that smashed out of the ballpark... With the Mountain Trolls, they got 215 kills, most of which were elite infantry units. So, overall for the Goblin Army, some of the units did fantastic, but the majority of them did abysmally. Uh, so yeah, that's the battle replay. If you guys have enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. I know it might not seem like much to you guys, but for such a small channel, it really does mean the world, and it is massively appreciated. Rest assured, more battle replays will be coming up, as well as more fashion breakdowns, when the mod eventually gets updated. If you guys want to send any battle replays for me to cover, as I said, my email is there waiting for you, as on my over Discord. Anyways, guys, with all that said, this is your host, Jackov, signing out.